From based upon our last module sessions, we went through a great deal of trying to um, get a close value about how the system actually is modelled, how it actually um, creates both a close, uh, an open loop and a closed loop model, and the different parameters by which um, each need to to be looked at. Now, um, a lot of the times. That is quite acceptable method of um, doing a calculation, or in other words, a um, an installation. But sometimes it, it doesn't actually um, have an optimal outcome. In other words, there is room for improvement, and the improvement is the discrepancy between the values of the coefficients within the model, in other words, both either as the feed forward model or the feedback model, um, to the parameters that are set in the um, the actual controller. So for instance, the um, looking at the dynamic characteristics and the steady state characteristics, um, if we have a look at a black box model, of the process, we note that there are various parameters that we um, can change and and um, basically categorize and um, model each uh, process with, and we'll talk about what those are. But making sure that the the process itself um, is actually as close as possible to the um, uh, the physical process. So it's, uh, if in one of a better word, it is optimizing the electronics to the pro to the real world process. So in that way, um, we uh, go through some recognized methods by which um, we are able to um, optimize that um, those coefficients. And the most prevalent one is because we are using a closed loop system, as which we are quite familiar with. The Ziegler-Nichols methods is one of the ones that allows a good estimation, plus also a good optimization technique in a very controlled fashion. So we'll go through that particular method. Now, um, when we do have a closed loop controller, we note that there are the definite uh, definite parts of the closed loop controller, and they are the um, output. The output then changes the process, which is measured via a sensor to give you your process variable. That process variable is then fed back into the system and compared against the set point to create an error, which then goes through a series of uh, guidelines and that then controls the output again which does the cycle. So we know that process quite well. However, when we just look at one particular aspect of that at, a, at one particular time, in other words, the output and how the, um, the actual process adjusts to the change of an output is referred to as the process response. Okay, and there are um, various methods and various ways to to deal with that. But one of the most um, um, uh, ways to actually develop a initial understanding and a correlation start of the um, process compared to the um, controller is to put it into just what is referred to as a self-regulatory. Well, now what that basically means is the note. <coughs> Sorry about that. Is an open loop. So what that means is that, uh, for instance, if we had a valve or say a pipe, um, and the pipe uh, we wish to measure the flow of the of the liquid within the pipe. And the only thing that we have to control the liquid is the opening or closing of a valve. Okay. Now, um, the liquid coming into the valve, in other words, on the uh, low, uh, the line side of the valve, would 
ha does have a certain pressure, it does have a certain velocity. Okay, so then you're constricting that particular flow through the valve to get an output. Okay, fairly simple. Understand that process. Then what happens if we then change the um, the the valve by say 10%, then the the process will change under its own um, regulation, its own um, self-regulating state, and become a steady state. So the um, the re that response, if we measured it in the uh, process variable compared to the output can be categorized as a typically overdamped. In other words, it takes time for the, the process to react. Um, there may be inertias, there could be um, time delays, but the idea is that it eventually will get there and create a new steady state. Okay? So if we now close the valve for a certain amount, then it will accordingly adjust the um, the flow to a new level because you are actually reducing the amount of liquid that can go through it. So hence that um, creates a natural response in some terms but is also referred to as a reaction curve if you take the uh, the graph of it. Okay, And in most processes that is um, a good starting point on how we can adjust the parameters inside a particular controller. Okay, And that is referred to as step one of the Ziegler-Nichols um, tuning method, of which there are several, but it's referred to as the open loop. Okay, Now, what does all that uh, have in aid? Between, as I mentioned before, we start off with a black box model, and that is typically of what a um, a PIND algorithm, a feedback algorithm works, and but it still needs to have the gain of the process, the time constant, and any dead time. Okay, so we need to find those parameters. Okay, yes, they are definitely involved in the feedback model, but they also are used in the feed forward model as well. So the um, by using the the Ziegler Nichols method, of which we'll go through, um, and then looking at the difference between open loop and closed loop, um, we can get a um, a good estimation of the process. Okay, so what we do um, is firstly um, let's go a little bit about what PIND actually means. Okay, so if we have a um, a disturbance or a, um, a change in set point, and the process variable was set exactly what we did just then. In other words, we opened the loop and we set the process variable. We tend to see something like this. Okay. In other words, the um, the process variable just takes its own value. It's un in other words, it doesn't really introduce any type of correction. Okay? If we try to think that that's not really fast enough or needs to be um, adjusted, then we might set the proportional value a little bit more aggressive, a little bit larger, and it tends to um, come to the point where it may start to oscillate. And why does it oscillate? Through the simple reasons that we went through in the last sessions, um, is that the controller is trying to work out the large errors because it's calculating very, very often compared to the responses. And because it is able to, uh, to calculate, it sets the output to very large values, which then, um, because there is a time delay, sets the um, the inputs to a large and they start to oscillate one and the other. And if you do it large enough that's you get the oscillation that you see here. Now 
if we now look at the effect on integration time, now integration time, as we mentioned before, resolves the issue or tries to resolve the issue of the difference between the offs uh, of a the um, of the process variable compared to the um, the set point over a long period of time. In other words, the error over a long period of time. So if the integral value was set and the integral um, recalculation value, uh, time, in other words, the reprocessing time was set very, very large, in other words, in the order of minutes, even hours, then you would not get much of a change occurring. Okay, So it won't tend to have that effect. However, if we now reduced it, okay, made it into a reasonable number, then, for instance, it may be in the order of minutes, seconds, then the system will try to recalculate again the offset and readjust the output to um, accordingly. So its, its recalculation time will then be made quicker, so the system will tend to react a little bit quicker. And, then, and hence, you get um, uh, what seems to be um, a, a offset. Now, if we take that to the more extent, then we may see that we have oscillation also occurring. Okay, so there's a there's a thing because of the same reason that the um, est estimation. So why we do we need to retune is to try to make an optimal step response. Okay, so and what does a step response actually mean? Is that you have the um, the the value which is able to be altered very, very, in fact, instantaneously because it is just a program value. But the change of the output or the change of the set point can't really be followed by the process because it has inertia. It's a real-world device. It then follows a um, quite well-known um, set of a uh, quite well-known um, form of um, of graph, okay, especially if you do have a second or first order response, is that it will tend to have the reaction curve similar to what we had um, in, the, in the previous manner, okay? So it tends to have that, that idea. So the idea to tune it is to make sure that it has less wastage, less wear and tear, also a quickness to actually get up to speed or get up to the point. So there's always a good method or a good advantage of making sure that the controller coefficients matches as close as it can to the actual dynamics of the system, of the equipment. Okay. And there are two ways to get a good outcome for tuning, and that's firstly is to minimize the total area of the error. Okay, so make sure that you uh, try to get it to settle as quickly as you can, but also looking at the magnitude of the overshoots as well. So you you have to both look at. To it. Yes, and this is shorter, so it takes the settling time a lot quicker. However, the overshoot is also there, so it's looking at um, looking at two of them um, as an objective. So.